Hello and welcome to Tonic TV, the craftiest Sunday show you know, and I'm going to tell you what's coming up on today's show. First up, I'll be going through the weekend bundles that are on the store this weekend. Next, we'll have a demo from Alison showing the brand new Designer's Choice 8 filigree florals. We'll have a tutorial from BB Cameron showing us the number shakers. Maria Willis will be showing us how to get the best out of Nouveau Crackle Mousse. And finally, we'll have a sneak peek of the brand new Xmas bundles available all week on the Tonic Studios store. So there you go, a jump packed show for you today. So first up, I'm going to go through the bundles that are on the store this weekend. We do bundles every weekend of amazing bargains and they run from Friday all the way until Monday. So you can find some of the best deals in Papercraft this weekend on the store. So let's find out what they are. First up, we have our Rose Garden Craft Perfect bundle this weekend containing classic, speciality and pearlescent card. There's eight packs in total of fresh pinks and greens and other bright colors. These are available on the store this weekend at 50% off. Our next Craft Perfect bundle contains pastel shades. These wonderful pastel tones are really subtle and go great with our designer's choice this month. And it contains mirror, speciality, classic, and pearlescent card. And that's available at an awesome 60% off. We've got a Nouveau Drop bundle for you. This bright selection contains wonderful, beautiful, bold colors. They're available for 40% off on the store this weekend, and there's six altogether. These crystal drops, if you haven't seen them before, create wonderful self-leveling embellishments. Well worth a look. Our Mike and Miss bundles next. You get six bottles in total in wonderful metallic shades. They're infused with mica, so you can create great designs, whether that's mixed media or just looking for something a little bit special on your projects. As I said, that's available at 50% off on the store. We've got Craft Perfect acetate boxes on the store this weekend. You get two packs, there's five in each, and they're available in a rectangle and square and at 50% off on the store. And finally, we've got a Nuvo glue bundle for you with medium and large flat tip glue pens and a smooth precision pen too. These are available at 40% off. And there you have it. Those are the weekend bundles. They run from Friday all the way until Monday. So a limited time only. You won't see these bundles again. So get them while you can. Next up, we have got a tutorial from Alison showing designer's choice number eight. Today, I'm going to be showing you a version of this card from our designer choice eight, filigrees and florals. So where have I started? So I've got a little A2 card. I want to show that this designer choice works on all sizes of cards and whether you want to make them really fast because you know what it's like someone will come and say to you I need a card now this minute or you can spend a couple of hours making a card that's the beauty of this set so let me show you the set first because it's really quite special it's lots of gorgeous panels that you can use within your cards They'll all work together, but they all work separately as well. So I am going to use this leafy border. So you decide on your card where you want to put it. So you could put it central. We could go over to the right. I've kept it to the left. So I think I'm going to stay there for now. So use a little bit of tape and make sure you're straight and you've got an even even panel top and bottom so that's looking pretty good to me so i'm going to turn it round on my plate check with your dye machine um, because you're going to get a weak spot right in the center of the plate so it may be that you will need to cut it maybe an extra time I'm going to pop it at a slight angle as well because that gives it a better chance of cutting. I haven't had any problem with this, so maybe try your machine. There we go. I'm going to come back because otherwise I'm going to go through the wall, I think. There we go. So there is my panel all cut from the background so as you can see even if you wanted oh I forgot to bring a pokey tool again I did this last I week I no I did the same thing day. last week it's all right I'll use my scissors I think because I I prep these at home and then come and film them in the office I just haven't got the same hair done when I'm prepping them <laughs> I've got a different head 
So there's our pattern. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's that could be your card. You may not want to put anything or even a piece of vellum behind it. That would be a good starting point, I think. And a little sentiment. I mean, sometimes we have to make cards for those occasions that we really don't want to make cards for. And generally they are very quick because they're needed immediately. So uh, just... this, this set, uh, hello everyone, I am, I'm, I'm here too on, on this video. <laughs> <laughs> we were wondering whether I should chip in, but yeah, yeah, here yeah, you go. Um, yeah, the designer's choice said uh, this is available uh, on the store now and uh, yeah, it's providing it hasn't sold out already. Uh, this is a demonstration. Designer's choice, if you, if you haven't seen it before, it is um, like a collection distilled into one set and you've got all these beautiful patterns and if you do want to see all the inspiration and stuff that you've seen on the desk with Alison uh, there's a video which where we introduce the set first of all and we go through all those cards so if you do want to look back at some more inspiration you want to be uh, inspired maybe you've just received this set mm. uh, and you're watching it now uh, then, then check out there because you've got some awesome designs on there for you. As you can see even though I've got a small card you would still fit three panels across the front of that card you would you'd obviously not leave such a big border there and that's a quick easy card again for you right so my next bit now I've cut a square panel this is all from our rose garden collection and it's all on the website today yeah so if you're wondering there's a bundle price on, on that, as I mentioned there. There's a, uh, so one of the weekend bundles, as I showed earlier in the show, um, there is some awesome deals on paper, card, Nouveau, we've got some glue bundles and stuff on there as well. So uh, have a little look there, but yeah, all that is part of that rose bundle uh, that you got there, that first one. So all the card, yeah, if you buy that bundle, and you buy the die set, you buy everything you need to do this. Um, and, and this set, as Ali's shown you, it is like a workhorse set, because you've got all of these core bits to your card whether you're doing headers whether you're doing strips whether you're doing um, an envelope uh, little bit whether you're doing a central panel that you want to do uh, it's got it all this set so yeah well worth a look oh i definitely think so yeah right so a little bit of glue i've put a few dots don't put too much because you don't want to seep in through and then a tiny little bit around the edge of the card I've cut this back in piece a quarter of an inch smaller than my main card. So it'll give you, you're covering all the detail in the back because it makes, makes your paper piece in a little bit easier. It gives you a panel to attach to. So there is the front of my card. I love this limelight. It's one of my favorite greens. So that's where I've started. I've taken it on a little bit further because I thought you'd be bored watching me doing the paper piece in. So I've used the olive green, green sorry, to pop in the leaves. And now I'm going to use the rose pink just to do the little flower bits. So again, using the same dye, obviously. Just going to run this through. And... So Ooh. So, um, <laughs> the, 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 you can also do that with the lids as well if you crystal you know obviously you can. Crystal, just a, a bit of entertainment uh so uh yeah this set's available worldwide it's available on the uk store and the the us store but you know order to the relevant store for wherever you are in, in the world uh, available for 19.99 so 19 pounds 99 in the uk with free delivery anywhere within the uk and in the us you've got a 19 dollars 99 and there's some great shipping deals on both sides as well so have a little look and yeah this, we do these dyes once uh, a, a month uh, these and they're exclusive to tonic studios and there's only a limited number they're not going to return after this so if you do like the set um yeah get get your hands on it because it's uh, yeah a really great set but that's our designer's choice range okay so i've popped a little bit of glue sometimes i like to use our precision glue but i thought i'll do it this time with our deluxe you can use either be careful when you lift your die because you want to try and hold your pieces in your die because that makes life easier when you're popping them into the die cut i love this color right what you could do let's take that off as well i'm trying to do this very gently 
without causing any hassle. You can take out all the bits you're not going to need and then you know exactly what you're, you're popping through then. But I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to be a rebel today. There we go. I wouldn't recommend using the scissors, but uh, seeing as I've <laughs> left mine upstairs, we'll go for it. So I'm we just... are, like, as a craft company, we are well stocked. So although Ali's using it with scissors, um, we have got special tools that are for poking we out have. and things like that. So, we have. Yeah, we got it all. So check on the website if you are looking for something a little less uh, dangerous than scissors. I know. Be very careful. I'm just checking if I missed any. I've got two little dots there, and I'm not even going to chance putting precision glue there. Um, put in deluxe adhesive. I'm just going to pop my. I've got a new glue. If you do have these, make sure you pop the the little um, sealant off the end. There we are. I've got a little bit too much glue there. I should have tested that first. That glue pen as well, that's in a bundle as well on the store this weekend. So um, we were talking just before the show like about, you know, the different types of glue and what, because uh, we talk about it. That's, that's the kind of stuff we talk about, uh, is different types of glue and, and how you'd use that type of glue. So, yeah, you can use it for paper piecing when you're, you're doing those really, really fine details and you just want to let it like a nice layer. But also, you know, you can write with it and things like that as well. So, yeah, these different types of glues, they do have different purposes, you know, if you, they are... You could specialise and use it in a certain way. So for paper piecing, that's what you said, I want it. That's it your, is. Your go -to. It's my favourite for paper piecing. There we are. What I like to do as well is if I am paper piecing, put the glue in the plate, in your, your little holes where you want the, the card to go. Leave it go off a little bit. And that way then you don't have it squelching everywhere. And you don't have a sticky mess at the end. I'm just moving a couple of these little die cuts because they weren't quite in the place I wanted to. I've got a couple left on my plate. So, oops, if I get it the right way, that'll be even better. You know, at times you think, I'm not one for using um, tweezers, but I think at times there is, uh, there is a place for them. There we go. There's always a couple of fallout. There we are. That's that. Well, that we've seen one. done on, on cards in the past, what, like, you know, sort of a glaze where they've done it, like a stained glass glaze. Yes. I can't remember how they did that. With, was it with drops or with, it, with glitter or something? You can either use our crystal glaze. Yeah. Or you can go over it with a clear mark embossing pad, make sure it's clean, um, and then put clear embossing powder over it. And that gives a nice effect as well, right? This is the last one and it is so teeny tiny, it's unbelievable. There we are. So pop that one in place, make sure we've got it the right way. And the ones that shouldn't be there will just drop out. And that's my paper piece in done. So that's the start of my card and then I think, right, what do I want to add to this now? So. As I've been prepping from home, it's kind of what's on my desk at the moment. And I had a couple of strip sentiments on my desk. So I thought Sending Love was a nice one to go on the front of this. So I've used the Rose Crimson, uh, Crimson Silk, sorry. Which is, it's one of our speciality cards and it's also in the Rose Garden set today. That's it. As well, uh, available on the stores this week as well is the the holographic new colours of the holographic paper as well. Oh, if you are on that they are awesome. I know, that is, they are just, you can stare into them and you'll, you'll look and you'll do it and then you'll you'll wake up three days later <laughs> and you'll say, where's, what happened? They're just that. I've actually been cutting with that this morning. They cut like a dream. Yeah, I was still like the rainbow effect that it, that it gets. You just... Yeah. It was, I was like a cat just watching it like in the... It's like looking into a fire. It was, it was weird. I, I just like I lost myself for a second in, in, in looking at the paper. Check check out those shades if you haven't seen them. Uh, those colours and new colours of them. And yeah, they're really worth. Like if you want to make yeah. you know an out of this world card or something of really like amazing, different, then try it. You know, it's good. So I'm going to pop this across the front, 
I may put a little bit of a bow in it actually, only a tiny bit because I don't want it sticking up too far. As you can see, I just use whatever tools I've got with me. <laughs> I'm sure we've got a special tool for that. We have got a special tool, but I will just use what I've got. <laughs> I think it's just one of them days today. Yeah, you can use your butt, you know, your bone for your PTF yes. folder uh, as well. If you... I actually like my paper crease for these. No, I don't want it that long. I want it quite short, actually. There we are, just a little bit of a bow. I put my glue too far over now. I'm going to trim off these ends. So we're just going to stick that there, that there, and just hold for a couple of seconds until it grabs. There we are. And I also use the strip in the center with the flowers in. We just bring that forward. I've used this strip. If you like adding a lot of flowers to your cards, that is actually a really useful die because you've cut, how many have we got? Three, six, you've got nine flowers and you've cut them all with one run through. So I think that's pretty nifty. I don't know what happened to my other three, but I've got six flowers here and they, they will do, they'll be plenty. How many does it cut out? Nine. Nine, that's nine. just in one cut. In one cut. So if you've got a project that you're adding lots of flowers to, um, you're away. I've yeah, actually only got five. Good. I'm diddling myself here. Yeah. And this is our ballet pink card. It's a very, very pretty, subtle, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Pop that one by there. And then where should we have the others? Maybe up by here. You tell I'm in a dithery day today. You know, when you, you have days and you can't make a decision to save your life, I think it's going to be one of those days. There we are. So we'll stick them on. Press them down. I'm going to trim off the edges now. You can leave this die cut. The only thing is, when you've got things that do protrude off the side of your card, you do risk them getting damaged. Yeah, when you put, like when you them. pop them in envelopes or, you know, when you want to save them as well and you put them away, they are the bits that are going to get damaged first. So you can add some little crystal drops in the centre. That's not to be there, so we'll get rid of that. And there's my finished card. So it's it's on, on lines of that one. A little bit poppier colours, but I think it's still gorgeous. Thank you for joining me today. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Alison, for that brilliant tutorial. Next up, we've joined in BB Cameron, where she's going to show us the number shaker, die and blister sets. A really nice demo. Take it away. Hi, everyone. This is BB Cameron here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together some projects using number shaker, dies and blister sets from Tonic Studios. OK, in a previous video, I mentioned that in this collection, we have nine die sets, including the zero. And the number six is also the number nine. This blister measures two and a half inches by one and a half inch. And all of them includes a number die and five blisters. To create a checker using any of these sets, we are going to need two pieces of cardstock. And using the number die, I'm going to die cut the front panel of the project. Then I'm going to grab the blister and I'm going to put inside the blister anything I want to add to the checker. I'm using here confetti and also Nuvo sequins. The only advice I will give you here is not to add too many sequins or confetti or fillers just because it won't shake. So you need to apply just a little bit of each element. So once you have this done, you are going to grab a piece of acetate, could be paper, could be any other thing, and carefully you are going to peel off this protective paper here behind the blister, and you are going to add that or stick that on the blister just like that. I'm using acetate because it allows me to show you exactly what I'm doing. 
And once I have this stopped to that background paper, all I have to do is to trim that paper or the excess around the checker and use double-sided tape on the front of the checker and that adhesive is going to allow me to adhere this at the back of the front panel of my project or the panel I die cut initially. So there you go. The checker element is done so that you can apply this on any paper craft project. This is a very basic step by step so you can understand how you can easy the process of creating the checker that it only takes a few minutes. So I show you all this in a previous video and today I'm going to share a longer version of that video and I'm going to show you how to add checkers to a 3D project. But this is just a little sample because from here the sky is the limit. So this is the beautiful die set that I'm going to pair with the number checker dies and blister sets by Tonic Studios to create this cute little treat box. And I want to show you the size of this die set here, just versus myself, so you can see how big this die set is. The largest die in this die set measures six inches by 10 inches. So it will fit in a standard die cutting machine because it's the same width of the standard die cutting machine plates, but it's one inch and a half larger. So if you ask me if you can die cut the paper using the larger die in this die set using a standard die cutting machine, I will say yes, you can do that, but you might need to move the paper a little bit to complete the cutting process. But it's possible. If you do have a large format, die cutting machine, that's a lot easier. Any other part in this die set will fit perfectly in a standard die cutting machine. Okay, the first thing I'm doing here is choosing the dies I'm going to be using for this project. And in Tonic Studios die sets, you will always get main dies, and those are the dies that you need to create your project, and also decorative dies, those that has intricate detail. This die set here includes a die that will create these pockets here because this is a memory book. And those pockets goes over a spine. But I'm not going to use the die to create those pockets. That is this one here. All right, so I have identified the dies that I need for my project. And I have them here on my table now. I'm going to put them to a side and I'm going to bring my glass mat and I'm going to use the number eight today so you can see here the die and the blister and for the back I'm going to be making today you need two A4 sheets of cardstock and decorative paper. I got here the die set so I'm going to start die cutting the pieces. So I have the tangerine die cutting machine by Tonic Studios and this machine has no problem to die cut almost all the pieces in one go. So that saved me a lot of time when I'm die cutting. I don't need to die cut piece by piece. I just place as many dies as I can on that large plate. And then I use the cardstock that I got left from die cutting to die cut any extra small part because I always try to avoid cardstock waste. So I also need to die cut two of these large pieces to create the box body. So you can see the piece here. And then before assembling the box, I also need to use this die here to create a window on the center of that panel. So for this, I might need to use washi tape to secure that die to the paper and to make sure it's not going to move while I'm die cutting it. So once we die cut that piece with that number die, our piece should look like this. And that's all the extra die cutting we need to do to this box using the number dies. I'm also going to use this die here to die cut a pocket and these two dies here to die cut a couple of decorative panels for this project. Out of camera, I also die cut little circles with a small butterfly in the middle. And those are kind of the locks for this box. 
and everything will make more sense when I start putting this bag together. It's incredible easy. It looks like a lot of pieces here and there, but you will see how easy this come together. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding decorative panels and I only have two decorative panels. So this is the top of the box. I'm going to fold this part here and I'm going to adhere that rectangular piece of patterned paper on that rectangular area on that die cut there. Once I have that done, I then adhere this other die cut shape like so, and then I'm going to adhere the handle of the box. You can adhere this handle anytime. I'm just going to adhere it now because I think it's easier and I'm going to adhere it in this way. You can also adhere the flaps of this handle towards the outside, but I just want to do it this way for this box. And I'm not measuring anything. I'm just eyeballing where I should place this handle. My box could be a little bit crooked, but I don't mind, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm not that control freak that I need to measure two inches from this corner to the other one. No, just eyeballing. And with the time, you will find that you are almost right when you just develop that eyeballing power. <laughs> Sorry for saying silly things, but that's very much me. Anyways, you need to make sure that that handle is properly adhered there. You don't want that to fall apart. And for the pocket, that is this piece here, then you start folding this as an accordion until you finish folding all those little bits there. And I apologize because my camera went blur and I could not notice that because the camera is above my head and I just didn't notice. But you can have an idea there of what I'm doing and a lot better here that you can see a lot better. Once you have that done, you are going to grab liquid adhesive and you are going to add a little dot in that corner and all you have to do is to gather these corners together just to keep those corners in place and then you have to do the same in the other side. Then I'm going to grab this piece here that is the back of the box and I'm going to adhere this pocket over it. And this little pocket has plenty room to put candies or a card or a gift card or something else in it. It's a very cute pocket. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add to this panel is this little part here. But pay attention and I'm slowing the camera here. I'm not going to glue it like that. I'm going to glue it like that. Repeat, I'm not going to glue it like that, but like that. So the folding is going to go in horizontal so that when I put this together, this element is going to latch on that horizontal slit on this piece. So you can see there that slit on the circular part of the latching element, it goes in horizontal so that this butterfly need to be glued here like that. So there you go. Those elements are in place. And the next thing I'm going to add is the top of the box. And I'm going to use double-sided tape to add it to the back panel of this box like so. So there you go. This is a lot easier to do than to explain, <laughs> to be honest. Now I'm going to add this part here. And pay attention because there are two little notches there and you have to adhere this right in the center of those two notches. And the bottom of this piece here have to be aligned with that first scoring line in that die cut shape. Okay, so here are the two parts totally finished. And now we have to add the checker. So I have here acetate in the blister and I'm going to trim the acetate to the size of the blister. Then I'm going to remove this plastic protector that the tonic acetate has. And once I have that done, I'm going to fill the blister using Nuvo Confetti in sequence. Then 
then all you have to do is to carefully remove this backing paper here that will expose the adhesive at the back of the blister and that will allow you to adhere this onto any piece of paper you might have or if you want to adhere this directly to your project. I will advise to do it this way because this allows you to have a lot of control on how and where you are going to adhere that checker. So once you have this done, you can trim the excess of acetate and then adhere this to your project using double-sided tape. I think adding this checker to anything is super satisfying. It looks so pretty and it's so easy. And I still need to do a couple of things to finish this box. So I'm going to fold the scoring lines here and here at the side of this panel. And I'm going to do the same with this piece here. So this is going to look like that. And I'm going to rotate the pieces and I'm going to face the bottom of both pieces like that to adhere them in place. I'm going to add this piece of decorative paper there totally optional and then I'm going to latch on the sides of the box just like this. Okay one more thing to go. So here I need to add the latching elements at the bottom of the box and there is this die cut shape here that has that purpose but we can't adhere that in place because we have that checker there. So we need to cut or to trim this like so. Don't be scared to chop that circle a little bit. And to adhere these elements to this project, I'm going to affix them on the handles like so. I'm going to add glue behind them and then I'm going to make sure that they are perfectly adhered where I need them to be. So just next to that checker. And I'm going to hold in place until the glue dries. Once this is done, I also want to adhere the side panels of this box as I'm showing here. So this is totally optional. You need to do that, but I just want to make sure that my box is closed. And if that I put anything inside, the things are going to keep inside. <laughs> and this is the project done. I have made another one in another color and I totally love this look and feel. You can see through the checkers and that's very nice. So there you go. I also have another idea and while I show you this, I also want to show you that you can use the number dies alone. They will create beautiful numbers and the size of these numbers is two and a half inches by one and a half inches. So the idea here is to fill the blisters with something else. I'm going to be filling them with candy. And to do that, I'm going to use tags. So I'm going to die cut or punch a hole in a background tag and the number in the front panel of the tag. I'm going to fill up the blisters with candy and nerds are perfect for this because they are tiny and they also come in different colors. After doing that, I'm going to peel this adhesive here at the back of the blister and I'm going to place foil. This is kitchen foil, so it's nothing that you might not have at home. And all you have to do is to trim that foil a little bit and then place the blister behind that small tag. And then add that to the backing panel. So this could be anything, could be a box, a car, or anything. So in the back of this, you will have that foil and you just need to peel it and then you can get the candy out. I just prepared those two blisters there just to show you how to make a project using two number dies. So all you have to do is to place the dies near the other but leave a little bit of gap between them because that's the space or the room for the blister behind. And then all I have to do is to place the blisters behind those windows. I need to trim the foil and I'm going to adhere this using double-sided tape. 
So what I'm doing there is to add tape around the window created by the dies. Then I remove the backing protector of the double-sided tape and carefully place the blisters behind. So I could add this to any paper craft project, but then again, I need to guarantee that that project has a little hole in the back so that I can take the candy out. I didn't have a smaller die, so I used that rectangular die there to make that hole in this piece. And I'm just adding another piece of foil because I don't like the way this is looking in the back of this piece. And that's going to show up in the back of the other piece. So you can plan that a lot better when you are using foil to seal your blisters. So it doesn't matter if I add an extra layer of foil, the foil is very thin and it's easy to peel anytime. I'm decorating this in a very quick way. And then I decided to add this to a card. But then again, I need to guarantee that that card has a hole to take that candy out. And then I'm going to die cut that card base also using that rectangular die. And then I'm going to adhere the topper over. And this was me experimenting very quick here how to do that. But I did this in the past, maybe three years ago with the first blisters that Tonic released to the market. So I like to add candy because if you know me, I love to make projects for children every time I can. So there you go. And you know, my son, I, as soon as he saw the candy inside the blister and he saw the, the backing of this, he immediately realized that he had to peel this off and he easily took the candy out. So it works, it's effective. <laughs> I'm confident that this little idea is going to work if you want to give it a try. And the cool thing about these checkers is that once you got that checker seal it with whatever you want to seal it and depending the filler you are adding as well. You can add this on anything. I really think that this is a winner for children party decorations. I was even thinking that you can do decorations for the 4th of July with that four that would be very nice and super original. And for Christmas as well, I have a pile of ideas to use these checkers. And these are very basic ideas for you to just get started. You know, the sky's the limit always when it comes to die cutting. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or visit the blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye. Thanks for that terrific demo, BB. We've got next someone making a debut on Tonic TV, Maria Willis, all the way from the USA, who's going to show us just how you use Nouveau Crackle Mousse. Hey guys, it's Maria Willis from Card Bomb, and I'm super excited to get to be here today because I've been asked to share some hot tips and tricks on Crackle Mousse. It's a product that I've been playing with for the last couple of months, and I really love working with it, so I'm excited to share. Let's head over to my craft room and get started. So Crackle Mousse currently comes in eight different colors, and it's easy to recognize by its octagonal packaging. Here's a quick look at those eight different colors, and you can see that you can get both a fine and thick crackle depending on how you apply the product. I've swatched all of the different colors on both white and black cardstock just to give you an idea of what they look like on each color paper. If you apply this product thinly, you will get a finer, more delicate finish with the crackle, and if you apply it thicker, you're going to get a larger, uh, thicker crackle effect to your finished product. I recommend using watercolor paper with this product as it will help to prevent warping as the product dries. I like this A2 cardstock from Tonic Studios because it's perfect for making cards. Now there are multiple tools that you can use. I like to use these flat brushes because they have stiff bristles to apply the product. I also use these media spatulas from Tonic Studios as well as this palette knife. The palette knife is my favorite. And I also use things from around the house like old plastic credit cards. So to use this product, you just take a little bit out of the pot and I like to just um, 
work it a little bit to make sure it's soft when I'm going to be applying it with the brush. And so right now I'm going with a brush direct to paper without a stencil or anything like that. You can use this to make backgrounds or to make focal points for your cards. It will dry in a thin layer. If you go too thin, you won't get any crackle. So you can see this heart doesn't have any crackle. It just has the sheen. So you need to make sure that you're putting enough product to get the results that you want. To clean your brush, just use a little bit of water and it washes out easily. Now I'm going to use the media spatula and create a different background using the yellow and green crackle mousses. So I've already applied the yellow. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply the green below it. And I love that those media spatulas come in a two pack because it means I don't have to clean my tools between each color. Now to get a smooth finish, I'm going to use that credit card and just pull down blending those colors together. So I'm going to put that aside to dry and I'm going to move on to my clipboard where I've taped down my watercolor paper to prevent warping. So now I'm going to be using a stencil with one color of crackle mousse just to create a single background. So this is what you're going to do if you just want to use one color and you don't want to do any blending. If you want to do color blending, you can use as many of these colors as you want and you'll just apply them, you know, on different parts of the paper on top of the stencil. So I just decided to use two colors. I went top and bottom and then when I got to the middle, I blended them together and then you'll see that I pulled down and mixed the colors in, in the center. So that looks really pretty when the colors are blended and I'll put those off to the side to dry and I will leave them taped down so that they don't warp. Now I'm going to show you a way to mix your own colors. So I took a little bit of that Russian white and I'm taking my aqua flow pens and I'm just going to add a couple of drops of color to these little dabs of, of crackle mousse that I've put on my block and I'm going to mix them up to create custom colors. You can do this with any of the aqua flow colors that you have. So really the color, the colors that you can create are endless. I've gone with a red and a purple and I'm going to use these together over a stencil to ink blend a background. This is one of my favorite techniques with these crackle mousses because it just means that I can really uh, create any look that I want. So I've gone ahead and I've put that red which looks more like pink up at the top and the purple at the bottom and then again I just did the same technique as before and blended them together. Now normally I would leave this tape down to dry but I wanted you to see what it looks like. So when you do tape the edges you get a nice clean border around your crackle mousse area. Now this, these samples are already dry and this one is an example of blending three different colors together. This one had a watercolored background and I put Russian white on top. And this one is that Aztec gold on top of black cardstock. It's such a striking look. Now I think the big question after you go and make a whole bunch of these um, crackle mousse backgrounds is what in the world do you do with them? And so I've got a bunch of samples to share with you. This heart was brushed with crackle mousse and has a very fine sheen to it. This card, the entire background is Russian white through a stencil and then the heart was just um, custom colors of crackle mousse brushed onto it and I just added a simple sentiment onto it. Almost the whole card is crackle mousse. So for this next example, I used the wrought iron crackle mousse over a stencil and I did make a large piece but I cut it in half to make two different cards. So you can do that and it looks really great. Just be careful when you cut these that you don't go um, knocking the crackle off. This card is um, three different custom colors. I did a yellow, an orange, and a red that looks a little more like pink, and I blended those three together, so I love that custom blend. This is another custom blend of like a lime green and the emerald green, but then I added some gold into it, the Aztec gold, and I thought that that looked fun and made a nice contrast. So this, this is another one where I did custom colors, and I did a turquoise and a purple, and just added a die-cut sentiment on top. And this one, I just wanted to show you that you can use it as a background for your stamps. You know, uh, make a dreamy background and put a unicorn on the front. This one, I brushed the heart. It has a little bit of texture only, but then the background was watercolored and, and stenciled over with Russian white. Now for this last card, I wanted to share something completely different with you. So I did a mixed media project. And if you look towards the background, you can see that the, the lime green and the bluish greens, those are all crackle mousse. And then I just put embellishment mousse and expanding mousse on top of it. So you can really do a variety of looks with this product. And I hope that after watching this video, you'll be inspired to dig into your own stash and create some projects of your own. Thanks guys. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found enough crafty inspiration to keep you crafting all week long. And I hope to see you back here soon on another edition of Tonic TV. Bye for now and have an awesome week. 
Thank you, Maria. I'm sure we'll have you back again to show us more from our Nouveau selection. All right, so finally, we have got a sneak peek of you from some deals we've got this week. So it's a Christmas special, and all on the stores, US and UK, you're going to find Christmas special deals on dyes. You've got some Nouveau on there. You've got paper. I think there's mousses included. So check the store now. Have a little look. And there are these bundles available for a limited time only. So check those out. Thank you so much, everyone who's joined us this week. Uh, and watched. we got more for you next week on Sunday. But thank you for watching Tony TV.